when when we met, you told me you had three audiences, and you went on to explain to me who they were and what they needed from you. But as we went through his purple thread, and you had conversations with God about the things that we were talking about together, you and me, you discovered that you could let go of one entire audience that he had not called you to, but that you had been trying to serve for years. Yes. Um, and phrases I used when I was talking to you was like turning around the Titanic or it's like pushing a boulder up a hill with with this particular group of people. And I kept aiming the message at a group of people who I knew needed uh, the medicine of God's word for trials they'd had, but yet who didn't seem to want to apply that medicine and were really resistant. They thought they were fine the way they were. They were comfortable. Um, I tended to be off-putting to them because I was really transparent about things that most people <laughs> weren't talking about. But yet I have discovered that through transparency, more people open up because they realize, oh, you feel the same way I do, or you've gone through a similar thing. And in my mind, that's how the body of Christ is supposed to function. We're supposed to be open with one another so we can help one another over something as simple as I've been up all night with little children throwing up on me or everything in our house is broken and now uh, some awful tragedy has happened because it seems like it never happens just one neat and tidy little thing at a time. And so if, if people were hardened and didn't really want to hear about it, didn't want to be open about it, didn't really want me to talk about it, there was no need for me to keep aiming um, God's healing word toward them if they didn't want it. It was, you know, bouncing off, running off. Uh, I So I let go. And that freed you then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. It was so freeing. Uh, I remember the feeling of astonishment I felt when you and I were talking about it and it hadn't occurred to me before. It was this enormous epiphany that this entire group of people that were so frustrating for me to minister to, who had even come against me in some situations, heckled me even in some situations. And I, I was always so astonished, you know, that that would happen and that I could let go of that and go and turn myself toward the, the group that God wanted me to minister to, still love these people, still care about those other people, but not necessarily feel a responsibility toward them. And it was so freeing. It was like, ah, oh, this is nice to be back in the yoke with you, Jesus. <laughs> you carry all the weight. Yes. yes. Yeah, it was so freeing. It, it was so, I just felt such joy in the spirit. And I, did I cry? I think I probably did. <laughs> But <laughs> I remember praying with you afterwards and just crying out to the Lord with joy in my heart that he had finally, that, well, he'd been trying forever. I had finally opened my eyes and seen it. It just took so long. And if I hadn't done the purple thread and worked through all that, I don't know if I ever would have seen it. I would have kept trudging along trying to reach a group of people that the Lord had not called me to reach. Mm -hmm. And that gave you energy and focus that you could then turn to the people who were already hungry, waiting for your time and your energy. Yes, it, it freed up a huge amount of my time. And as God usually does in my life, he brings trials in my life to direct me because I am a workaholic at, at heart and I will keep working until I drop. And so sometimes he has to drop me, <laughs> which it's a funny way to think about it, but he brought some more adversity in my life even soon after that, which narrowed the amount of energy that I have. And I let go of even more responsibility than I ever thought I would, even though in my mind I knew at some point these things were going to be let go, go of. I didn't know how it was going to happen. I thought I would make a decision. It would feel right. And instead it was um, my health. And there it went, and I just had no energy to continue to do some of the things that uh, contained that, that group of people that were difficult to minister to. And then I could more narrowly focus where he had called me to focus and talk about freeing. And 
in, in every possible way, it was, you know, emotionally, physically, spiritually freeing, very healing, the whole process. It sounds to me that he was, this was a gift to you from him in preparation for your tomorrows when you would have no choice. Yes, yes. If, if I hadn't realized that beforehand, before I got sick, it would have felt like the sickness took that away. But because I'd already spiritually come to this realization and was letting go of it and had turned toward ministries that were more effective and that I knew where, where, where the Holy Spirit was using me more powerfully, then when I let go of even more things that were attached to that ministry after I became ill, it was a relief. It wasn't a, you know, a tragedy or I didn't feel sad about it. I just knew it, these things have to go. They're not the top priorities, which uh, become very clear when your strength becomes really limited. And all along the way, this wasn't a decision that you made independently, but in conjunction with what Christ was revealing to you. Exactly. And he knew I was going to be sick. <laughs> he knew this was coming and whispered that to my heart when I first got sick, that there was purpose that he had in it. And so I just clung to that. And as, you know, when I first got sick, I had no idea, you know, what I had or what was going to go down. But as weeks and weeks and weeks went by, it became obvious that um, his plan was to, to let me release so many of these responsibilities that I had that were, you know, e e things I hadn't realized were weighing me down because they in some way still connected to that group of people that I had already let go of. So he did that. He, he helped me to realize what I needed to do, and then he helped me to let go of it. So in that way, the illness is a blessing. And I really have to say every piece of the illnesses that, and tr trials that God's brought into my life have been part of the biggest blessing in my life to help me to step behind him, to follow in his footsteps, to walk in the path he wants me to walk in rather than rabbit trailing off in some direction that looks like, oh, I can do that. And, you know, there I go. So he's a good shepherd. Yes, he is. Yes, <laughs> he is. <laughs> and because you'd made all those changes, then you didn't feel when the... When the sickness became a reality and it was obvious that that was going to be a life change, yeah, <clears throat> you it, weren't it, disappointed in him for expecting no. more from you than you could handle because you'd released this audience and you right. didn't feel like he was disappointed in you because he's the one that told you to release the audience. Exactly. Yeah, it was so, um, it was a relief at the beginning to, to let go of that group, even though some of the ministries I was still doing brought me up against them like we would it would we would intersect but it, I would emotionally realize you know if they don't benefit from this thing I'm doing this is in God's hands it's not it's not really my responsibility it's out of my hands but then to have the Lord free me from that area of my life that I was doing that took you know 20 hours a week or more mm -hmm. and that's a lot of time yes. that to let go of and um I felt just this weight lift off that I didn't have so many of these other commitments because my strength was now so limited and I could focus on things that gave me true joy. And it's not like they weren't challenging or difficult, but I knew that I was right where God wanted me to be in the things that he, that he pruned down <laughs> to as he was pruning the vine, lots of analogies using here, <laughs> leading the sheep. <laughs> So that I would be uh, in the right place. And so the results of the sickness were a gift in, in a lot of ways. Not just, you know, what we're talking about, but many, many ways. So, yeah, he, he's so good. Um, and it's really wonderful. I mean, we know his promises tell us that he works all things together for our good. And the older I get and the more trials he takes me through, the more I see and recognize sooner this is why you've done that. I, I understand this. This is for my good. This is for our good. And what used to take me, you know, a long time to accept and embrace and see, I can now through a lifetime of living through this with the Lord, see, yep, yep. <laughs> we might as well just yield <laughs> because it's good for us. It really will be. He's <clears throat> promised it and it's happened every time. So, yeah, he, he really used the purple thread to get me ready for 
the big change that was coming in my life that he knew was coming so that when that happened, I already knew the purpose of my calling and the groups I could let go of. And it was really easy to let go of things he wanted me to let go of.